guys. Welcome back to Saturday Morning Cartooning. As you can see, we're back at the Baron Art Center. Uh, last week we did Sonic the Hedgehog. Let's take a look at some of your viewer art. Great job, Manas and Roshan. Today we're going to be doing a classic cartoon character who some of our younger viewers might not even know about yet, and that is Popeye the Sailor Man. Today we're going to look at one of the first truly famous cartoon characters, Popeye. Popeye is a cartoon sailor with exaggerated features like a cleft chin, um, an overly long torso, short legs, big feet, and most famously his oversized forearms. He has one closed eye and one open eye, a popped eye, and a corncob pipe. He's a rough and tough sailor with a froggy sounding voice and uh, sometimes comically bad grammar. He was created by cartoonist E.C. Sager. Popeye was part of the original Thimble Theater comic strip that was first published in 1919. And it started a group of weird characters, uh, one of which is of course Olive Oil. You'll see her on the far right. Uh, she's a skinny, long-nosed damsel in constant distress. Uh, Popeye himself did not make his first appearance until uh, 1929, and uh, he was a very minor character back then. He proved to be very popular and was quickly brought back and eventually became the star of his own comic strip and his own comic books. Popeye became an even bigger star when he was made into animated cartoons by the Max Fleischer Studios in the late 1930s. You'll remember from our Superman episode that the Max Fleischer Studios also made those very famous Superman cartoons. Popeye cartoons were a popular mainstay throughout the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. He was a star of a very weird live-action movie starring Robin Williams in the 1980s. And what I remember the most is Saturday Morning Cartoon's Popeye and Son, which was future adventures of Popeye and his son. And probably the most famous thing that everyone remembers about Popeye is his love of spinach. And spinach is said to give him his super strength. And if you go to the grocery store, you can get yourself a can of Popeye spinach. So today we're going to learn how to draw Popeye together. Okay, let's get started. Remember, uh, give yourself a couple of sheets of paper. I always find that it's easier to draw on, you know, if you take a few sheets of paper and not just one. If you draw on one, you kind of get the texture of the table underneath. So it's, for me, I like to have a little bit of cushion underneath. So I, I usually draw on um, a few sheets of paper or on a pad. Um, Today we're gonna to be holding our paper portrait style. So it's gonna be, the long edge is gonna be on either side. Remember, this is landscape style where the long edge is on the top and the bottom. We're gonna be holding it portrait style because um, today's character Popeye is pretty much gonna be taking up uh, the entire area, the entire drawing area. Um, if we take a look at our reference photo, you can see that he's, his head begins right at the, pretty much at the top of the sheet and his feet um, pretty much go to the bottom and of course on side to side as well. So we're going to be using the whole portrait orientation today. So let's get started. All right, remember, um, you're going to need a pencil that you like. You're going to need a good eraser. Um, you're going to be using, when it comes to inking, remember, we're going to be using the uh, permanent markers. I have permanent markers in a bunch of thicknesses. So uh, depending on uh, what we're going to draw and which one we're going to use, um, I brought a few with me today. Okay, let's get started. We're going to, remember, light touch with your pencil at first. And we're just going to draw the head first. And Popeye's head is sort of like a bean shape, like a lima bean. Remember, look at our um, reference drawing. It's sort of like a lima bean shape right here. And remember, at first we're breaking it down into its basic shape. So if we do look at that reference drawing, we see a, the head shape here. We have the long torso here, and then we have two big arms going out this way. Look at the size of his arms. Again, remember, uh, Popeye has uh, comically oversized or exaggerated features. So look at the size of his arms. Look at the size of his feet compared to the width of his legs. And just how, look how long the torso is. So uh, what we can do is we can just draw in a little line where his body is going to go. 
Then we can just draw it in afterwards. So his body's gonna just swoop down from the back of the head like that. And then let's just block out again in basic shapes where his body's gonna go. All right. A leg is gonna go, and you know what we can do at the bottom? We can put another circle and that's where his legs are going to come out from. So one leg is gonna go out this way. Again, just lightly sketch it in first. We're gonna be drawing everything in um, with more detail in a little bit. So just sketch in that one leg first. And his foot is gonna go up this way and then back around. And it's gonna be a little bit flatter here because that's where it's touching the ground. But for right now, don't worry about details. Just get those basic shapes in. We can do the details later. This leg is gonna go back. This is the leg he's stepping off from. So it's gonna go back. Remember, don't worry about having this, this sketchiness. It's okay to have a sketchy light pencil line because we're going to be inking with smooth lines later on. So don't worry about it being sketchy now. You don't want to be sketchy when you ink because you want that nice smooth line. Again, the foot is going to be flat on the bottom. That's where he's, that's where he is. Um, this is where his foot is hitting the ground. All right, let's move back up to the arms and I want to show you another little trick um, that you can do with certain cartoon characters. It's called articulation points. And just like when we draw a circle for the head or we did down here for his waist, you can draw little circles for his shoulders. Again, these are just little pencil marks for now. They're just a guide. We're gonna be uh, inking around them later on or drawing clothes over them later on. So it's not gonna be in the finished drawing, but it's just a guide for us to let us know where his um, shoulders are gonna go. In fact, I'm going to just move this one up a little bit so that he has a little bit more of an arc to his shoulder. Look at how uh, this shoulder is down here on the reference photo, but the other shoulder is up here. So we're gonna do one down here and then one up here. That'll help us get that movement in there. So let's sketch in some lines. That's where one arm is going to be. And then his arm is going to come down this way and he has huge hands too. Look at the size of his hands compared to the size of his arm up here and his shoulder. He's skinny up top but as he goes down on his arm it uh, it gets thicker and thicker and his his arm is uh and his hands are absolutely huge. So we're just going to draw in just sort of like a, an almond shape for the forearm and then another little shape for the hand. I'm just gonna give it a, a rough look right now. Again, we'll put in those details later on. All right. He has one, the thumb going towards the body and then three fingers going out this way, but the, the finger that comes out at the viewer cuts off the view of the other two fingers over here. So you're gonna see this finger first and then the other two are gonna be ducked behind this one. You don't see the bottom of the middle finger and then you just see the tip of the third finger over here. Again, Popeye is one of those characters that just has um, three fingers and a thumb. Let's draw in the other arm. This one goes down this way. And his hand, this hand is in a fist and he's giving a thumbs up. If you look at the reference photo. It's a fist and he's giving the thumbs up. So right now we're just gonna draw just a, a rounded um, rectangle shape for the fist. And then this the suggestion of its thumb. We'll go back in and do everything else later on. Let's work on the head a little bit. I'm gonna get the camera a little bit closer as we work on the head. All right, we're going to uh, give him his face lines and we're just gonna use the contour of this lima bean shape to give it to us. Almost as if it's a lima bean that has strings on it. Uh, one string going vertical, another one going horizontal. Again, the nose usually starts where those two lines intersect. So we're gonna give him a little 
nose right here. Little nose, he's got pretty big nose actually. And then his mouth is going to spring from underneath that nose. So it's gonna come out this way and then up past the horizontal face line over here. And then we can give him his open mouth. Okay. His teeth. And his tongue. All right. We can put the little lower lip line. We do the upper lip line. Let's do one eye. Remember he has, he's got a popped eye. So he's, that's why he's called Popeye. He has one eye open and then one eye that's always shut. So the one that's open is gonna be the one that is closest to the viewer. So we're just going to draw a little oval right there. You can shade it in now, we're gonna ink it in later. And just a little suggestion of an eyelid right there. An eyebrow actually has two. Right, and then the other eye is going to come down. We're actually going to flatten part of his head right there. And we're going to give him a bit of a, a um, an eyebrow right here. And then it's going to go down into the closed eye. So it's going to be a, sort of like a loose letter S. And then the closed eye right there. All right. If you look at our reference drawing, I mean, it's starting to already look like Popeye, but he has a very deep cleft in his chin, almost as if he looks like he has two chins. So we're going to draw that in next. So we're going to use the, the vertical face line as our guide. I'm going to draw in one side of the chin all the way around this side of the face. Again, we're just darkening in a little bit with our pencil lines. We're gonna be inking later on. That's when we can be smooth with our lines. Don't worry about being um, sketchy right now. You wanna be sketchy. You wanna be sketchy because if you make a mistake, it's gonna be easy to erase. All right, so here is one chin that goes up to where his ear is gonna begin, which is gonna be right here. Use that face line as your guide. And put the ear right there. All right, and the other side of his it's gonna come up this way. We're gonna do the hat in a little bit. Uh, but let's put on the other side of his chin. If we look at the reference drawing, the other part of his chin springs out from the tip of the nose around this way. But let's give it a little bit more dimension. We're gonna have it just come out a little bit more and make it more exaggerated. All right, looking good. And now we can begin his hat. Let's just do a loose sketch on the hat right now. Give it a, there's a button right there and the button can start right where the vertical line reaches the top of the head. That's gonna be the brim of the hat. This is the brim of the hat, and this is the extended brim that goes out. And then, just a couple of lines going this way, up, a fold, and another fold comes back into the brim of the hat. That's good. He has a little, a couple of wisps of hair coming out from underneath. So let's put that in, one and two. We can go back in later on. And of course, we can't forget his corncob pipe. Now, what's interesting about Popeye is you would think the, the pipe would be coming out of his mouth over here. We don't see where the pipe goes into the mouth. It's behind this chin. Again, this is just another exaggeration. So we're gonna draw a little stick out like that. And then a little cylinder. All right, we're going to draw the neck going down to the shoulders. And what's interesting about his neck is, you'll see it draw down and then just goes down from the base of the neck right to the first button, creating a collar. So we can do that. The action line is this, this vertical line that we drew earlier. 
and we're going to use that line as a point where the two edges of the collar meet. Right, like that. All right, and we can even put the first button there if you want to. All right, let's draw the collar going around the neck. We're gonna draw like an open U shape on that side and that side. And we draw the first shoulder going into the sleeve. And the second shoulder going into this sleeve. But before we go into the sleeves, let's do the rest of this shirt right here. And his shirt just makes three folds. One, two, three, and then it ends. And he's got a little tuck right there. His shirt is tucked in, sloppily tucked in, but it's tucked in. And then this is going to be his belt. one side of the shirt and then let's put in the other side and that's just a straight line well a curved line but it's there's no folds in it so remember it's okay to be sketchy now but when we when it comes to inking that's when we want to be smooth all right now let's use um, this again this line as our point where we put those buttons in so we're gonna put a button here use that line there there and there all right, and before we get to the feet, let's finish up these arms. Um, this is the bottom of his sleeve right here, and it goes into the shirt with a fold. And then his, the end of his sleeve is capped with sort of like this, I don't know, like this circular shape right here. So he has like very comically drawn close and then we can erase in there all right okay now we're going to really start working on the hand here um, he has very knobby elbows so you're going to draw the line coming coming from the sleeve out here to a little bump in his knobby elbow Part of the arm coming out that way with a fold in the skin going right into the forearm. On either side. Then we can start drawing the hands. Now we want the, again, we want the hand to look like it's part of the arm. So we're gonna have that hand line go past the edge and into the, um, the forearm so that it looks like it's all attached. We draw one thumb here, the palm of the hand, going into the pointer finger. Remember, this middle finger is tucked in between so we don't see it. And then this hand, or this finger, intersects this finger and gets cut off. So the pointer finger is cutting off the rest of that finger. So we're just gonna leave it like that. And of course, don't forget, his anchor tattoo. So we're just gonna lightly draw it in now. It's a circle, a line going down, about a third of a way down, put a line going across, and then another third down, put a curvy line. And that's his little anchor tattoo. All right, let's move over to this arm. Same thing, his chest is gonna be cutting off part of the um, the sleeve cap, which again, it's very uh, circular, almost like a donut, like a blue donut. I'll show you on the reference photo. Kind of looks like a blue donut. I'm gonna draw the line going down for the back of the arm to the knobby elbow. And we're gonna draw, I'm actually gonna make it a little bit bigger than what I originally sketched out. Just draw the forearm, the top of the forearm with a fold in the skin and then the line going into the, um, the donut sleeve. 
I erase those lines in there because we're not going to need them. Um, let's draw the bottom line of the forearm going into the fist giving the thumbs up. Now, if we look at the fist giving the thumbs up. He has a gigantic thumb. And look at this. I was wrong. He does have another finger on this side that we don't see because he has one, two, three, four fingers and a thumb. Look at that. Almost as if he has three fingers and a thumb on this hand and four fingers and a thumb here. So we have the one big thumb going up this way, but then the, all these fingers are curved underneath it and then stacked almost like, um, almost like donuts again. So let's, let's try sketching that in first. So this is gonna be the top of the thumb, the thumb going up. Again, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger just to exaggerate the size. All right, now, from the thumb over here, start a little bit up, just a little bit right here, and then draw a, almost like a letter G. So a, a finger coming around, bending around into the palm of the hand. And then we're just gonna draw three more underneath. One, two, three. All right, then we're gonna draw just a fleshy part of the palm of the hand as if the fingers are pressing into the hand. And then the bottom of the palm of the hand right there. Okay. Before we finish the feet, I'm going to erase the original articulation points up here. These two little shoulder circles. I want to draw in the stripes that he has on his, um, his collar. So very simply, you're just going to use the contour of his shoulders from here and just draw a curvy line going to right where that button starts over there. And we're gonna do another one going up from there on that side. And you want it to connect to this part of the arm up here. We'll go back in later and really uh, ink that well. All right. Now we can finish up with the feet. We're actually almost done. Um, we're going to draw on um, this leg, very simply, line going in, little fold of the fabric right there. Again, just like his knobby elbows, he's gonna have knobby knees. So we're gonna put a, a, a knee knob right there. couple of fold lines right there and the back of his pants. Now, uh, just like uh, many characters, we don't see where the back leg connects to the body. So we're just gonna draw this line right here and then begin this leg on this side without it being connected to this part of the pants because we don't see that connection point. He has another curvy cuff there. His shoes, remember he's walking. He's putting the pressure on this leg, the pressure's on his heel. And give him a little sole of the shoe and then some stitching in his shoe. We'll see that later better when it's inked. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And on this foot, the pressure is on the tips of his shoe. So we're gonna draw this one. Like this. That little fold is gonna crea actually create that stitching for us so we don't have to do anything else. And then add on that sole of the shoe. Again, we'll, we'll see that better once it's inked. And it's actually time to start inking. So let's get our inking markers together. Okay, and just a reminder, uh, these are permanent markers. So please make sure that you are careful around your clothes, your furniture, your skin. 
Uh, if you get it on your skin, it will eventually come out. It might take a couple of washes, but if you get it on furniture or your clothes, uh, it probably won't come out. So just be very, very careful. All right, let's get started with inking in the head. And I am already seeing something that I wanna change a little bit. This is why it's important to have a light touch. This little um, button on his hat, I want it to come back a little bit further to where his eyebrow is. Because if you look at the reference photo, you can see that that button is right over his eyebrow. So I'm just moving that back a little bit. And that's allowed. This is your drawing. There are no right or wrong answers. All right, let's get started. All right, let's do the nose first. Into the mouth. Teeth, tongue. We can ink that in like that. All right. That suggestion of a lower lip and the suggestion of a top lip. That is going to emphasize that squinty eyed um, look that he always has. Let's do the ear. Let's do this eye. This is his popped eye. Top eyebrow, second topped eyebrow, again emphasizing that squintiness. And then that's his um, shut eye. And this eyebrow, I'm just gonna thicken it a little bit. Remember, uh, this is called tapering when a line is thicker in the middle than it is on the end. All right, and we can do the line of the forehead right here. Um, I'm putting a little pause in that line because it's as if his eyebrow cuts off part of it. And then go right around to the ear over here. And then let's do his chin. The other side of his chin. that button that we moved earlier. We're gonna do the brim of the hat. The brim of the hat that comes out over the edge. I should really do this side of the forehead first and the eyebrow. That's gonna stay white. And then this, one, two, three. Almost like a, it looks like a top of a muffin. All right, and then let's Put in the little lines for his hair that are coming out. Now, if you take a look at how I did that, um, to give it a, uh, a wispy look, you start with a little bit more pressure and then let it up as you let go. All right, let's do his neck. Oh, actually before that, let's finish up his pipe. We should finish the head. All right, so you're just going to ink that line in like that, and then sort of like a marshmallow shape. And then in the top, you're gonna to put a little black teardrop, a sideways teardrop, and that's all you need to do for that. All right, let's put the neck in, going into the collar. When, uh, when you're done with your, your pencil drawings and it comes time to inking, uh, inking is sort of like a little second chance if you want to change something. Um, it's okay to, uh, to ink something a little bit differently than you drew it. And you'll know when you want to do that. The collar. One shoulder. Second shoulder. Let's do those lines in for the stripes on his shirt. Going into both arms. Right, 
this top button I'm gonna make a little bit more oval than I did. And so I did it originally very round. I'm gonna do, make it more ovally because I want to give it the idea that um, that he's turning sideways, that he's a three-quarter side view character. Do those little folds in his shirt and around and the tucked shirt. Remember this line can stay unbent. It's just a little curvy. But then let's do this arm. Knobby elbow, fold in the skin, going down, thick forearms, into the hand. Remember this finger comes out and cuts off the view to these other fingers. One, two, and then the invisible finger that we didn't see earlier. And then the thumb. All right, ink in his tattoo. Let's do this arm. Thumb. Bent in finger. One two, three fingers underneath. Fleshy folds of the palm. Two lines going in towards the arm, then the bottom forearm line, connecting to another knobby elbow. All right, his pants. Uh, actually, there was one thing that I didn't draw in, and that is just a little suggestion of his belt right here, because he has a belt. Let's just sketch that in with pencil real quick. And then he's got a little buckle right there. Let's do his pants. A little line going down this way. Knobby knee. The bottom of his pants right before the cuff. And then this line going into the back of the pants. This line coming down, there's his belt. This is the cuff. He has very rounded cuffs on his shirt and his pants. So we're just gonna ink that in like that. Let's do the foot. Again, we're gonna try and keep this line back here flat because that's where all the pressure is on the ground. Let's draw in the sole of the shoe. the stitching of the shoe. Now we'll finish up this leg. That's the bottom of his pants before the cuff. This is his knee going back. This is the cuff, the rounded cuff. Again, there's the flat part where his foot is on the ground. Stitching. And so. So we're not exactly done. What we need to do next is erase the original pencil lines. Okay, that was a lot of erasing. Uh, one of the things um, I always notice whenever I erase something is there's usually a line or two that I forget to uh, sketch in. Uh, and that's a good time when you're erasing your lines to, to notice those things. Um, and I noticed that I forgot his uh, two more little squinty lines around his eye. One is gonna go here, just with a light touch, do one there and one underneath. So this is, again, an extra little line to really emphasize his squintiness. All right, and now we can begin coloring. All right, we're gonna do red for this stripe right here. We're gonna use a little bit of yellow for, of course, the button up here, the corn cob pipe, and 
his buttons here, 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 and his belt. We're gonna use some light blue on his pants. Okay, we're gonna use some brown for his shoes. And we're gonna use a little flesh tone crayon for his arms and his face. I notice I forgot to ink one little line right here. And we should probably ink in his cuffs. pink tongue and he has a black shirt now if you notice I'm coloring in his black shirt but I'm leaving a little bit on the edges because if we colored it in all in black we wouldn't see all the lines that we drew or you could just leave it white too that's fine too there you have it Popeye the Sailor Man.